Hi, um, my name is uh, Jiří Beneš, and I would like to tell you a few words about uh, reliability in distributed systems. Uh, so, uh, past years, uh, we are going from uh, monoliths to uh, more like uh, microservice infrastructures and more we split functionality uh, into small pieces. We have more points of failure uh, for such systems because uh, if you communicate with more systems, you have more points where uh, network issues may uh, occur, one of the systems uh, may go down and will affect other your systems. So, this talk is about a uh, few tips or techniques how to make from this this. Meaning, if one your dependency goes down, uh, to uh, check that uh, your main system doesn't go down with it. So, uh, before we start talking about such techniques, one important question. Do you know what your app even does? Uh, a quick story. Uh, when I was uh, in my previous company, we have used uh, some uh, server provider. Uh, it was a little bit more expensive, but he claimed to have uh, sorry he claimed to have 100% uh, SLA, like uh, backups in different uh, locations. And uh, one day, uh, all of our uh, applications that we run of, uh, on their servers went down. So. We called this uh, server provider asking when they're going to fix it. They were like, fix what? Your servers. What servers? All of them. What do you mean? Like, no nothing is running. Check your website, nothing. And they were like, oh, crap. So uh, what happened was that some plumber uh, broke some pipe in the building, and it flooded ground floor, and it burned out all of their servers. They claimed to have 100% uh, SLA and uh, fully backups in different center, but the center, uh, but the center was uh, in the same building. So everything was dead, and uh, it took them six days to recover, and they, from the start, didn't even know that something was broken. So it's uh, really important to know what is even happening in your app. So to have everything uh, under control in the systems, it's important to know what you even using. In current company, we have like hundreds of dependencies, third-party APIs, databases, and all of the stuff. And uh, it's difficult to take, uh, to stay with uh, what you have and what, in what state it is. If you have hundreds of dependencies and one goes down and affects your main application, it's quite difficult to, uh, to track uh, what, wrong, what went wrong if you don't have uh, correct tracking. So uh, when I build app, what I usually do is to make some list of third-party APIs, uh, what uh, APIs we use, databases, redises, in which data centers are stored, uh, check uh, if it's critical system or not, uh, if uh, the system has some SLA, how often do we use it? Is it like three times a day or thousand, um, uh, uh, for thousands uh, in a minute? So uh, when you deploy something, uh, it's important to track uh, from the bottom the servers. If uh, CPUs are okay, memory, you can use Itzinga for that to see if your iron actually works. As next point, you want to know that your application is alive. One of the basic stuff you can do is to make some public uh, endpoint that would just uh, reply pong to your ping and use some third party service like pingdom uh, to check uh, your app every second, for example, uh, if it's available. It's uh, pretty basic stuff, but uh, let's go deeper. Uh, then you can, uh, for example, set alerting on your Nginx logs. For example, uh, to make you alert if you received like uh, 100 non uh, 200 uh, uh, responses in your request per minute to alert you. It's a little bit better than the previous thing. 
So this is the basic uh, how to cover if your application is alive. If you go deeper, you are getting to uh, actually uh, resources that your application uses. Uh, speaking of uh, databases, third-party APIs. Uh, and it's uh, really important to cover if these systems work. Uh, I like to have under control each of the stuff my application uses, like each database. Uh, if it's working, what's the response time of this uh, database, uh, how, of, how often I call it, if everything is okay. Uh, for example, to track also database, if response time is okay, if CPU is okay, if connections, writes, uh, everything is stable. The next thing is to get deeper, for example, uh, in these resources. Like, we call our databases, but if uh, your SQL queries aren't that performant, for example, you are missing uh, some indexes or query is written wrongly, uh, you have to track what are you actually doing with your uh, database to put there some slow log or something to know w which uh, query exactly did uh, what. To check a filter, for example, or queries that took uh, more than 10 seconds and check them out. Because one single query can uh, take uh, your database down if it is uh, poorly written. And if you do like thousands of uh, database queries in a second, it's really difficult to find that one that is ruining your performance. Most of the previous stuff can uh, handle some APM, some M APM uh, performance monitoring, which uh, can uh, basically wrap your app and send the statistics to some server to know that uh, which, what exactly did uh, each Python uh, request. For example, we spent one second querying database, we spent a few seconds uh, working with Redis, uh, the application could be idle for a half a second because it was blocking by something. To have a nice overview over it, set up uh, some dashboards and alerting. To see if uh, average database query suddenly takes from uh, 100 milliseconds to one second in average. Like uh, this previous APM and the monitoring will cover a lot of uh, Im important stuff you need to track in your application. Like, but not everything can be uh, monitored that automatically, right? Uh, it doesn't actually cover the functionality uh, your application does. Meaning, uh, you are running, for example, some eShop that the previous monitoring won't cover the use case then you stop selling uh, computers in a Germany market. Like, for this, you have to do something custom. So what uh, I like to do is to do some uh, library and system like uh, SSD to send uh, <laughs> custom metrics to some uh, different system. For example, when I would finish order, I would send that event order created uh, product was TV and it was from Germany country. And uh, you can build above that, above, again, some dashboards and monitorings. You might won't be alerted that you stopped selling TVs in Germany because uh, it might be critical for your business, but you might not notice from the start what exactly is happening. That will uh, beautifully relieve like, the causes, uh, not the causes, but uh, the consequences of problem. And when you are alerted about it, you may start digging into the causes. And the cause might not be like your system. It cannot be working perfectly good, but you may be affected by a dozen different causes. So this will help you to reveal that something is actually happening. Next thing is, above that, uh, you may start uh, doing some more complicated stuff. For example, in our company, we have a team, uh, analytics team, that mm, builds some machine learning and discovers anomalies in these metrics. For example, you may create something more uh, sophisticated. You might be interested that in uh, working days, 
uh, without like uh, public holidays. Uh, you want to be alerted when uh, is sell uh, less than 80% of TVs in Germany. And it's not that easy uh, to discover because of uh, glitches in uh, traffic, uh, holidays, and uh, etc. So above that, you can build something more sophisticated if you have uh, like resources for that and it's critical for your systems. And if nothing of these helps, uh, there is always somebody who will tell you with uh, some delay that something doesn't work for you, some customer or client. Like, yeah. So since you have uh, monitoring of uh, your uh, resources and your servers, uh, the Another important thing is to set some error tracking. Uh, probably uh, the most used uh, systems are like Rollbar or Sentry. That will basically wrap your application and uh, send to third-party system your exceptions and uh, exception stacks, local variables, and build statistics about, above them and uh, proper alerting which is really must have for each application. Yeah. Also, uh, when I mentioned uh, the sending of uh, custom metrics, I also uh, think that it's important to properly log everything is happening in your application. It will help you to find out the cause of uh, each uh, problem. For example, for critical functions, uh, uh, we use on our company decorators that will populate to some logging systems, outputs, inputs of functions, uh, local variables like environment variables. And it's a really big helper uh, when you try to debug something to have everything covered, what actually happened inside of your requests. Also remember when in our previous uh, company, some guy, we had some Django application and a guy was for one of the critical database tables creating primary key with count uh, of the records and adding one, which is a really bad thing to do. And when somebody erased some records, we started duplicating uh, primary keys and the whole database become really messy, like records were mixed together, and it took like days to recover it from uh, syslogs. It was a really hard thing to do, and at least you learn how to work with regex properly. We wanted to uh, take some backup database, but again, We've been uh, working with this previous server's provider, and uh, he didn't have backups for this week at all. <laughs> Some uh, buggy thing. So, you know, when you uh, correctly track errors and monitor your stuff, now uh, what, what to do with the fails of the other systems? How to make them not affect your primary system. One of the basic techniques you can do if you query some third-party API or some database is to set timeout. Here is an example of Python request. It's a really basic thing to do. Uh, imagine uh, you provide the user some complicated dashboard with a lot of information, and somewhere in the corner is information about temperature of Santo Domingo. It's interesting, but it's not critical information for your system. And if you query some API that will tell you the temperature uh, in Santo Domingo, uh, and the API is down, it may take, like, uh, for example, minute to return error. So what, do you, what you could do is to set timeout, like wait only three seconds uh, for this information. If you don't get it in time, okay, uh, display user the rest of the content and don't care about the temperature. User won't be that angry that he has to wait a whole minute and, uh, and uh, your system uh, gets clear. Like, 
Another thing is that it's important, it's not just about their users. If you use some, uh, some framework that is not uh, fully async, it will stop, start blocking your workers. If you have 100 workers to process your requests, and all of them are waiting for third API that is down, uh, you will start throwing away uh, another incoming request, and it will totally kill your application. Another thing is that, for example, when you query database, you have to first establish connection, and then uh, do the actual query. And some Python libraries allows you to set timeout uh, just to the query, not to the actually creating the connection. So this is an important thing to do when you start uh, setting timeouts, to know exactly what is happening in the library uh, you are using. If it's for both, uh, for one of them, or to know what will happen if timeout will occur. And another thing is that if you start throwing away uh, requests, uh, take care of like post requests. You will throw it away, but you won't know if the actual request on the other side was performed or not. You will just don't know. Uh, so this is a basic technique, and it's good to combine it with uh, circuit breaker pattern, uh, what it does. Previously, we saw that uh, some third party API was down. And does it really make sense to query this API uh, 10 times a second or 1,000 times a second if you know that the previous request was down? Uh, uh, probably not, and for that you can use circuit breaker. What it does, it actually uh, counts errors you get from this third-party API, and after some uh, amount of errors, he will just stop communicating with this third party. He will wait some amount uh, of time, like 30 seconds, and then he will start trying to communicate with it again. Uh, so basically, if you know that uh, third-party API is down, it's better not to communicate with it, give it some time to recover, and uh, return uh, error instead. Uh, here is an uh, example of uh, using PyBreak library in Python. You just uh, set up a decorator. Uh, you will say that uh, you allow maximum five fails, and uh, then you will wait one minute uh, before you start communicating with it again. Apply the creator and uh, it checks uh, uh, exceptions from this function. Actually, the decorator has three states. The closed uh, is like uh, in a you know, cir uh, circuit. Uh, when it's closed, you allow to actually send the request to third party API. If it's open, you just kill the connection and don't send the request. There is third, uh, third state, half open, that tries to send there some of the request to see if the application is alive again. So uh, how it looks like? Uh, you query some uh, service, and first request, it will return success. Yeah? The breaker is in a closed state. Everything is okay, so you send second request. Again, uh, everything is okay. Breaker is in a closed state. Third request will time out. But you don't care about uh, just one error, so you will keep it closed, but you will start counting. First request will return uh, time out again. So we know that uh, the service is down for sure, so we will open the circuit. You will uh, return instant errors for uh, 60 seconds, for example. And after that time, you will send there few requests. If uh, you return success, you will close the bra uh, breaker again and send that uh, uh, request as it's uh, fully recovered. Yeah, uh, there are some libraries for that in Python. And these techniques like, help you not to overwhelm a failed uh, API with uh, something else. Um, 
So uh, that was for the request that are not that uh, critical for you, but uh, you might start, um, you might have some really important action you want to do, like put some record into database. Uh, and if it fails, it's, and it's critical for you, you want to uh, repeat it, yeah? Uh, so uh, you will set some timeout and uh, uh, you will try to write the database again and again um, as long uh, as you need. Just don't do it infinitely. We have some uh, libraries for that, simple decorators. And if, if function fails, it will, uh, it will run it again after a uh, definite period of time. Uh, it can like, be really useful uh, and it's simple to implement. But uh, it has also downsides. Imagine, for example, you have front-end that has a repeater. You have some uh, back-end API that has, again, a repeater. And uh, you have false and the back-end, for example, queries database. Uh, okay, so when the database is down, uh, back-end will try it three times, then populate error to front-end. Front-end will repeat it again. So calls your backend again, and backend will repeat it, uh, the request again three times, for example. So with one request, you will populate uh, 10 or 30 uh, database queries. And if you start doing something like that, you have to know uh, what are you dealing with, because you can flood uh, some system with another request, and it will kill more than uh, it was before, and it might not recover from, from, uh, from failure if you start hitting it uh, so much. Also, uh, if the end API is yours, you can, for example, define uh, response errors. The response error may say, like, uh, I am down, please don't call me again, I will be down also in uh, another seconds. give me some time. So you can distinguish some request when it makes sense to repeat or not. Or you can also set some budgets. For example, you will repeat it like three times, but only certain uh, tries in a minute. You will keep trying to repeat it, but after a minute, like all your requests did like thousand tries to do it, so you won't repeat it after this uh, budget is depleted. Yeah, and one important thing, if you combine like timeout and this repeating stuff, beware what you do if you manipulate with data. Because you set timeout on some API, you actually don't know uh, the result, and you will call it again. So you can write uh, into database like more times. So it's really powerful, but you have to know what we are uh, dealing with and if the other system will handle it. Yeah, uh, another thing, uh, you have, uh, for example, some API request, and usually there is stuff that you can do asynchronously. For example, you don't need to send email immediately in your Python request. You can send it to queue and send the email asynchronously later. So we will save some processing time, and uh, you won't get returned that many errors, or there won't be that many opportunities to get errors in main uh, request. Oh, okay, uh, we had uh, several techniques how to prevent errors or some uh, downtimes, but uh, sometimes there is something really important you need to do. You want to do it like in your main request, but it will fail anyway. So uh, in a company, we currently created some uh, service that is called Diagnostics or Repairs. And what it does, like it uh, periodically checks consistency of uh, our data, of our database, to check if everything was, uh, went smoothly. Even though something will fail, uh, we have uh, some list of checkers that uh, will try to recover uh, from some uh, failures. It's really it's for stuff that is important to do immediately, 
and uh, even though if it fails, you can uh, recover from some problems. So what do you have? Like some list of uh, checkers that seeks for particular uh, glitches in our database. And we have also some fixers that will try to recover it with some actions in third parties. Yeah. And the last thing uh, uh, that is also important to keep uh, on mind, usually when there is some failure, uh, it's good to write some uh, outage report or uh, post-mortem. It's good to track uh, your downtimes, what actually went wrong, to fix everything properly, to have uh, like better prevention, to learn from fails, apply, it, apply the fails to another parts of the systems. You will know that you had this outage in that part of the system because you didn't set, for example, timeout properly. So check all other systems if it's uses uh, properly. So I believe that it was the last slide and I hope it was useful at least for somebody here. So thanks.